about man and woman and mm -hmm. became chair of the board. Yeah. Real question is, Steve, do you remember to list what city you're running for? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good evening. I'll call the regular, regularly scheduled uh, uh, meeting of Tiffin City Council to order for July 6, 2021. This evening will be led um, in the invocation and pledge of allegiance by Councilwoman Yana Tuno. Let us pray. We thank you, dear God, for this day, for its blessings, its opportunities, its challenges. May we appreciate that whatever comes our way, when we turn to you, you will show us the way. And we, when we are called upon to help another in need, you will provide. We pray for strength and guidance for each day's duties and problems. May we be challenged to always give our best and be assured of your presence in all our service. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Don. Very nice. Would uh, Clerk Ann Forrest please call the roll of council members? Councilwoman Hanatuno. Here. Councilman Jones. Councilman Leopard. Present. Councilman Perkins. Here. Councilman Perry. Councilwoman Boyle. Here. Councilman Gillick. Here. Let the record show that uh, five of the <coughs> seven members of council were present for this evening's meeting. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call to order a public hearing. The purpose of the public hearing is to uh, discuss consideration of the 2022 tax budget and proposed ordinance 21-45. This ordinance adopts a tax budget for fiscal year 2022 um, and a director of finance to deliver the budget to the Seneca County Auditor on or before July 20th, 2021 and declares an emergency. Anyone from the attending public who wishes to address city council may step up to the podium, sign in, and uh, direct your questions to Council President. <laughs> okay. For the record. She's, for the record. <laughs> really, she's great. But. <laughs> All right. We have no one uh, stepping forward, so I declare this public hearing over. Do we have any petitions? There are no petitions, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, hopefully everybody got an um, opportunity to read the minutes from our previous meetings, uh, June 21st, uh, June 23rd, June 28th, uh, two, uh, two special meetings on, on those days. Are there any additions, corrections, or deletions to any of those minutes? Seeing none, without objection, the minutes will stand approved uh, as presented. We're now under committee reports. Finance Committee, Councilman Gillig. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Law and Community can uh, Planning, Councilwoman Boyle. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Anyone from Materials and Equipment? No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Personnel and Labor Relations, any, anyone from the, that committee? Okay. Streets and Public uh, Property, Council, Councilman Perkins. <laughs> no report Excuse this me. time, Mr. President. Street sidewalks and sewers, Councilman Leopard. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Economic development and downtown planning, Councilwoman Yantuno. No report, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> does anybody see a need for a committee of the whole meeting? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, I'll wait to call a special meeting. We're now under reports of our officers, uh, His Honor Mayor Aaron D. Montz. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we wrapped up the month of June uh, in a very strong financial position. Uh, we eclipsed just over a million dollars ahead of where we were in 2019, or excuse me, 2020. Uh, and we're still about a half a million dollars ahead of where we were in the last normal year of 2019. So uh, things are looking very healthy uh, from a financial standpoint, which is very good for the community. Uh, we will have a very, very solid idea of exactly where we are financially come the end of this month, because if you recall last year, the tax filing deadline was uh, bumped all the way back till July 15th. So once the month of July 2021 wraps up, um, we're going to have a very good idea of exactly where we are from a financial revenue standpoint, our, in, our income taxes, which of course, as council knows, uh, is really the vast majority of our general fund 
uh, revenue is income taxes. We really do live or die by where we are at financially with income tax returns. So um, stay tuned for that. We're very confident, though, that we're going to be hundreds of thousands ahead of last year, which is good. Um, but uh, we will notice assuredly that we'll be down probably fairly significantly in the month of July just because of the strange year that we had last year and comparing it to it. So when the dust settles at the end of this month, we should know about exactly where we are for, uh, for over half of the year and headed into the, the home stretch of 2021, which is hard to believe that we're already there. We're already starting to mull over budget ideas and items for next year, and all of that will be uh, presented to you all in the near future. It's really hard to believe we're starting to enter that home stretch already. Uh, we also are continuing to, to mull over the large document that was sent with uh, the stimulus funds and their uses. Uh, this latest round of stimulus financing, uh, the, city of Tiffin, t the city of Tiffin uh, is due to receive just a little under $3.5 million. Uh, the problem is the federal government did indeed make it uh, much more restrictive on their uses. Uh, if you recall the last <clears throat> round of funding, uh, that we received from CARES Act, uh, you could just automatically, uh, one of the largest expenditures where you could just determine that if it was a, a, a public safety employee, so like police or fire, paramedic, uh, they were automatically assumed to have been uh, COVID responders. So we could use the, those funds to offset salaries and additional costs. Now with this program, uh, we must declare that 50% plus of their time was spent uh, on COVID related items. Um, which, of course, there is no definition of what a COVID-19 related item is, uh, at least as of yet. Uh, so we're kind of looking to see what clarification other communities do. I, I will be talking to other mayors. Uh, we're even going to have a discussion at NOPEC because NOPEC, while it's an energy aggregation, is still a council of governments from all over the state of Ohio. Um, all the way up to Northeast Ohio, well past Cleveland, all the way down to Springfield, Ohio, and all the way Southeast, all the way to Athens. So. There will be other mayors in that group. We're going to discuss ideas because it's it's difficult. You know, you look at police and fire, and every single call that they went on, they did have to assume that that individual they may be responding to had coronavirus because they could have been asymptomatic. You come up on an accident scene, you have no idea what condition that person was in. Um, but as typical with the federal government, there has not been a whole lot of clarification, and even their own information that they've released out. Um, every time they've told us they're going to get information, it's come significantly later than what they've told us. So the positive news of that is we have until the end of 2024 to spend the money. So we do have time. We shouldn't rush this because if we spend it incorrectly, uh, we could and very likely would have to repay the funds. So we would like to get it right out of the gate. Um, so we may sit on that money for longer than I think we would like to, but I'd rather get it right knowing that we have time to do it the right way and not have to return those funds to Washington. Uh, I would prefer that we find ways to spend all of the revenue here locally, because if we do not, the money will be returned to the federal government, which then in turn will go to other cities uh, and will be spent by those individuals. So I think we owe it to our taxpayers to find creative ways to ensure that the money is spent here in Tiffin, Ohio, and not sent to other cities to pay for um, uh, poor, poorly run communities in other states and areas, or those that are struggling, um, or, or just got more creative in their uses for the money. So uh, we're going to continue to digest it. I've challenged all of our department heads to read it over. It's a very lengthy document. Um, but to start coming up with ideas, because unfortunately, the vast majority of ideas that were given earlier in the year to myself and the city administrator um, are just, they're either expressly forbidden or we're just not confident in a way to make a creative enough narrative that it is uh, COVID-19 related. Um, one area that uh, is clear um, are infrastructure upgrades. However, it's not road and bridge type of infrastructure. Broadband is one of them. So we're exploring options on how we could offer uh, broadband services in the community uh, after this weekend's uh, Hedges Boyer Park display and no one out there having internet because of overloading the towers. Uh, that came up this morning about the possibility of, of running high high speed broadband uh, through fiber out to the park. Uh, so we are trying to get some creative uses. And at the end of the day, one item that is uh, permitted, uh, as strangely as it sounds, are water and sewer upgrades. Uh, so we could use it for sewer infrastructure in the community the only downside to that, of course, would be that it would not save enough money to actually lower anyone's sewer bills. Uh, it would obviously help 
the overall nut that we have to crack of about what with inflation will probably be $120 million before the sewer, uh, before the long-term control plan is completed. Um, but at least it is, it is a way that we know we could spend money to help offset those costs. Uh, the federal government did declare that you cannot use the money in any way to offset uh, a fee or a tax decrease. So we could not do it in any way to, to decrease our taxes or our fees, et cetera. So um, they've kind of made it very difficult uh, for communities like Tiffin that actually did not financially struggle with our own revenue at the city um, to, to spend the funds. But I am confident looking through the list that we can come up with programs to, to expend the, the funds that we were given. It's just we may have to get a little more creative than we did the last time. Uh, a few other items. Uh, I just really want to thank uh, Bryce Kuhn and Mason Carell, Todd Maddox, and the seasonal staff out at the Parks and Rec Department uh, for, I think, without a doubt, our best Independence Day celebration that we've had yet out at the park. Uh, the place was packed. Um, every year, I know we talked in Committee of the Whole, but every year we lose cell phone service out there sometime late in the evening when enough people finally pile into the park because it overloads our towers. And he told me this year they, they lost it by 5 p.m. He said it's never happened that uh, early in the day. Uh, just too many people overload our tower and they really couldn't get any kind of cell phone reception to even upload pictures to, to Facebook, he said. So, um, but that's a good thing. They estimated close to 10,000 people uh, were at Hedges Boyer Park. And I, I neglected, I looked all over and neglected to write down his total. Do you recall Dale or Brent at Department Head how many folks he said that they had in the pool? Wasn't it 1,800 and something? 1,870. Yeah. Like so almost 2,000 people used the city of Tiffin pool. Of course, not all at once yesterday. I think he said his high was about 570 in the, at, in the fenced in area at once. Um, but obviously with the heat and the humidity, uh, it was nice. I heard the food trucks uh, just did gangbusters in sales. Some of them even had run out of food. So it was a busy, enjoyable day for everyone out at the park. Um, no real issues, no fires to put out, so to speak. Uh, they had a good time, so I want to thank them all for it. And they're already looking to next year because next year, of course, is our city's 200th birthday. So the city of Tiffin Bicentennial, uh, they're planning an even larger display and event at the park next year, along with the Tiffin Bicentennial Commission that is working on their events. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, a very big name performer uh, is, is slated to come to the city uh, to perform at that at the park for the 4th of July, as well as we're going to put some money in the, to the budget for fireworks uh, to make it even larger. So make sure you reserve 4th of July time next year in your calendars. We're going to have a heck of a party to celebrate our city's 200th birthday. I uh, also want to talk uh, last week and thank the Chamber and Destination Seneca County uh, for helping rescue the Halloween parade. Um, I think all of us were caught uh, by surprise when we woke up to read in, in the Seneca News Daily that the Halloween parade had been canceled. Uh, none of us had any idea that that was coming. Uh, but I want to say it really goes to show how good of a community we have because in about 12 hours of making phone calls, we already had a committee together to run the parade. Uh, a few of the folks that typically had helped with the Tiffin Center Parade uh, jumped on board and, and agreed to help. So there will be a Halloween parade. It will be this year uh, in downtown Tiffin. Um, I'm told that it was state regulations that would not allow for the parade out at the developmental center. It was not a local decision. The state has nixed it. Um, so as much as they wanted to continue with it, they couldn't even if they wanted to. So things are being moved downtown for this year. Uh, it will be held on Halloween. Uh, 4 p.m. in downtown Tiffin, and then, as always, trick-or-treat uh, will be that same day. It's a Sunday. Uh, October 31st, trick-or-treat will be at 6 p.m., so soon after the parade. Uh, we're really hoping that by doing this that families can make a day of it, uh, show up with their children, and maybe even mom and dad with their Halloween outfits on, uh, and come to the parade in costume, and then come on and uh, go out to the various neighborhoods in the Tiffin community and trick-or-treat. So. Uh, thank you to, uh, to Destination Seneca County, the Chamber, and the other volunteers who stepped up to the plate to help us save the Halloween parade this year. We really need things like that after how rough last year was. Uh, you probably have seen them cruising around Tiffin, but Bird Scooters did launch uh, on the 21st. Um, so far, they've been a big hit. Uh, I'm told from the representative that they've had more rides than they expected. Um, so we're just encouraging people to ride them responsibly. We've had a lot of questions at the city about uh, enforcement 
Um, and the one thing that I think the public has kind of misunderstood, a lot of folks that are calling in or emailing thinks that the city is operating or putting out these scooters and it is actually a private company. Questions have come up about liability, what happens if the scooter runs into my vehicle, et cetera. Um, it's no different than if a bicycle hits your vehicle or something else. It's, it's a uh, matter between you and the individual, insurance would be involved, et cetera, but the city uh, in no way manages, owns, operates these. In fact, they're able to operate uh, based off of state law that was passed. There was no local changes to our local laws or ordinances that was done for this. It all exists because of state law um, that is already existing in the state of Ohio, and that's why the scooters are able to operate here in Tiffin. So if there are complaints on how they're being operated, if it is a legal complaint, uh, such as they're not following various laws or ordinances, of course you can call the Tiffin Police Department. But if it's just someone that you think is is 15 or 16 years old and not 18, that's something that you really need to file a report with Bird uh, with that private business because we're not in the, the business of going around and, and grabbing people off of scooters and IDing them for ages. So. Um, also, very good news, uh, TCEP, TCEP announced just earlier today that four businesses received downtown facade program grants today. Uh, Tony Consolo for the Best Taco Shop, uh, they received a $10,000 facade enhancement grant. Donna Bros with Cabin Creations received a $10,000 grant. And then Jay Zing with Hunan King had a $10,000 grant. These three grants totaled $30,000, yet the investment that the three businesses are planned to make into their business totals almost $100,000. Uh, so we're very proud for them, um, very happy to see these, these changes. Um, I'm pretty excited to see, because I know Jay, I, I hope he has some kinds of drawings or something with Hunan King, because he came and proposed making the building look a lot more historical. Um, so he's going to make a complete facade enhancement and change to the outside of that. And then also, pretty neat, but not nearly as costly, um, the, the layered group came today, and uh, they're going to put in an old-style sign that is one of the perpendicular long skinny signs with the layered building. So if you click the TSEP press release, um, it will bring up a picture of that, that sign. And I can't remember how many feet tall it is, but it's going to hang at the corner of the building and be seen from all directions. It's really going to look nice and kind of have that probably 50s feel. Um, that, that's just really going to look phenomenal in downtown Tiffin. So all three of those were approved, and uh, we now are up to over $2.6 million worth of private investment into downtown since the facade program started. 92 separate applications totaling over $2.6 million since that began. I want to congratulate Tiffin Fire and Rescue Chief Rob Chapel. He was sworn in, and Audrey just texted me, 19 feet tall on the sign on the layered building. Thank you, Audrey. <laughs> uh, chief Rob Chapel being sworn in as our, our new chief last week. Uh, there was a very nice ceremony held in the fire truck bay down here at the station. Um, and then I also want to congratulate and welcome aboard our three newest firefighter paramedics, Eric Hansberger, Bobby Holm, and Mike Mushitz. Uh, the three of them have begun. And it has literally been a baptism by fire because they have had so many fires in the last few weeks. Um, between the, you know, just across the community and even a couple out in the township, uh, the chief said it's been an extremely busy couple of weeks um, here in the Tiffin community uh, as far as fires and in the surrounding area. So uh, the three of them are being started new. In fact, I think Deb told us this morning that what, Dale, they were pulled out of, I think, orientation early because of one of the fires last week. Yeah. Went away from orientation yeah. to the fire. Yeah, so they they're they're getting their 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 share of uh, of fires here for the first week, but um, very happy to have them on board as well as our new chief. Uh, we are currently hiring here at the city of Tiffin, of course, for police chief, as you all know, and then also for the position of dispatcher. Uh, we did have a dispatcher leave for a different position, so we are hiring for those two positions. Uh, the railroad safety enhancement project has been completed. Final invoices have been sent out. Uh, it did start on July the 1st. Um, as we have told everyone, please do not expect train horns to stop just instantly. Uh, I have noticed some trains are not blowing, others are. It will take time. They told us it could be a year or more until we actually see the true impact of the quiet zone uh, due to training of the new engineers and whatnot going through. Uh, street milling and resurfacing will also begin this Thursday, weather permitting. Uh, they had taken a pause. M&B, who had received our bid, moved out of the city to do a couple of other community projects because we had so much paving this year. They started, did several streets, 
Now they're coming back, they're going to start. Uh, they will probably, as Matt said, not get finished until sometime in September with all of the streets that we did have this year. Um, and then I also wanna congratulate Corinna Haynes, who is the new operations manager at TSEP. Uh, we're very happy for her. Um, and, and hopefully uh, your boss brings her here to, inter to introduce her to all of the council members uh, in the near future, Audrey. I'm sure they would love to meet her. And then also congratulations to the Renaissance on Wheels and Pink Lady. They just celebrated last week their one year anniversary of those uh, two businesses. And then just to let everyone know of events coming up, this coming Saturday, the 10th of July is a farmer's market downtown in the morning. We also have the St. Joe's Festival the, which is Saturday and Sunday, the 10th and the 11th. Uh, then Saturday evening is the East Green Summer Concert Series. It's the brass band from Chicago coming in. That is a concert on July the 10th at 8 p.m. And then on Thursday night, July 15th, and Thursday night, July 22nd, uh, there are two more shows put on by Tiffin Parks and Rec Department with local bands at the East Green Amphitheater. Uh, Jake Heil is playing on the 15th. Uh, and then last but not least, you all are invited to the ribbon cutting and grand opening for best taco and breakfast shop on July the 15th at 4 p.m. Concludes my report, Mr. President, but if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thanks, Mayor. Any questions for the mayor? Councilwoman Yantuno. Just a quick one. I know you said the sewer bill wouldn't really make much difference, but on the CARES money, but we've had several projects come up that were trying to fit into a budget would at least help alleviate some of the problems if we could maybe use it for that to move forward on those? Yeah, it certainly could. And that's why we're looking at all different avenues right now. Um, it's literally a, a matter of if we use the money, it would just be taking that versus taking it out of the excess right now in the sewer revenue fund. So uh, there's plenty of money currently in the sewer revenue fund. So it really wouldn't make much of an impact because of the fact that that fund has millions of dollars sitting in it right now saving for future projects so and it is the money that is there is incorporated in for these projects and ongoing maintenance as well so it it's kind of why we're torn that it could help but we can't reduce the sewer bills because of it and it, it's kind of really i think one of the less or the least uses uses that we would like if we just exhaust all other options but it's something that we we but did it, talk about but if you did have it you know, to use, and you yeah. want to get it used, it would be a good way so that we don't sure. have more. Because that one night might actually be a problem sooner than we maybe hope. So in yeah. some ways, we could actually prevent that problem. Yeah, well, that's why we're trying to get her, uh, you're talking the one that we're reading legislation for now for the design of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, that's the problem. Hopefully, we have no major issues before the design's completed because you can't do much until the project is designed. Because it may not help us any, but at least it'll prevent a problem, yeah. a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. But I understand, I understand yeah. what you're saying, though. Yep. We're considering all options. We just want to make sure we can spend the money here locally on Tiffin projects, Tiffin people, et cetera, versus it going to other cities and states. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Councilman Gillig. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Mayor, like, uh, like you said, I know you're considering all options. Might uh, HVAC or air circulation, might that qualify as a, as a potential? Yeah, so it, I know things that help purify air do, um, but I'm not sure if to what degree it has to be. So um, it could certainly be a possibility. We're just going to have to get clarification on items like that. But things that purify the air are. So I, I would, I hate to assume anything with the federal government, but I'd like to think that if it was a new air conditioning unit or heating unit that was also an air purifier, that there may be that possibility. But I would hate to also assume because we know the federal government doesn't always uh, use common sense. Is that the best way to put it? <laughs> hey, what else? Thanks, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, Clerk of Council, Ann Forrest. No report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Or Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have with us this evening from the uh, Finance Office, Linda Neely, for with the finance report. Yes, so for month end, Ending June 30th, um, the total receipts for the month were $7,295,525.91. The total expenses for the month were $6,695,680.89. The general fund unencumbered balance was $4,250,218.25. Income tax receipts for June 2021 
for $1,053,335.37, which was an increase over June of 2020 of two thousand or $244,000. $437.31. Um, that represents a 20.46% increase year to date over 2020. And the quarter percent portion that went to Fund 215 for streets was $130,076.15. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for Linda? Councilman Gillig. Thank you, Mr. President. I would so move to accept the finance director's report and bank reconciliation as presented. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, we have a motion to accept the uh, finance director's report and bank reconciliation. Is there a second, Councilwoman Yanatuno? I'll second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Director of Law. Let's see, Howard. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, at your um, um, second meeting on uh, the 28th of June that was devoted to the Charter Review Commission uh, presentation and their, uh, their proposed amendments, um, I, uh, I presented the, the changes. After the meeting, I um, um, discovered that uh, the report that the commission had submitted um, inadvertently had uh, um, not included two items, um, and uh, these were items that the commission had approved during uh, the time that they had met. And so um, I want to just briefly review uh, for the public and for council what those items are. And then uh, during motions, if uh, you uh, um, agree, I would ask that you would, by motion, like you did at the last meeting in, in, on June 28th, that you uh, approve that those items be presented uh, as part of ordinances for council's consideration to then present to uh, the voters. Uh, the first item that um, was approved by the commission but not included in the report was a change to section 4.02B, which changes the um, um, waiving the three reading rule from three fourths of council to two thirds of council. And that's two thirds is the same as when you, council declares an ordinance as an emergency. The, uh, the second proposed change, which was uh, omitted, was in section 7.03A. And what that change does, uh, that deals with the Zoning Board of Appeals and it removes members of the Planning Commission from being appointed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. It makes all of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals members appointed by uh, the mayor uh, subject to city council's approval. And what that does, it eliminates, avoids the possibility of a conflict that uh, may uh, occur when a property owner would appeal a planning commission to see decision to the Zoning Board of Appeals and, and it puts a planning commission member in such case, uh, a situation where they would have to rule on a decision, an appeal of a decision they already made when they served as a planning commission member. So this avoids that, uh, that conflict. So these are two um, items that, again, were approved by the commission during their service, just were um, omitted from the report. So uh, if there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. If not, um, during motions, uh, if you agree, you would uh, approve that, uh, that those two items be added to uh, the ordinances that I, I will be preparing. Uh, Councilman Leppard. Uh, question for the Director of Law. Did you say that the first item was 4.062B? A uh, 4.02B. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. That's my report. Thank you. We're now under written communications. We have mayor's request for legislation number 21-14, <clears throat> City of Tiffin Municipal Arts Commission. Uh, mayor's request for legislation 21-14 uh, will be forwarded to the Economic Development Downtown Planning Committee.
Then we have mayor's request for legislation, number 21-15. Um, this is for ABR nomination as a Tiffin Historic Trust representative. Um, mayor's request for legislation, 21-15, uh, will be forwarded to the Personnel and Labor Relations Committee. Finance Director's Request for Legislation, number F21-23, to amend the 2021 Budget Ordinance 21-11 to appropriate funds into the Parks Department budget. Uh, Director of Finance's Request for Legislation, F21-23, will be held on file in the Clerk's Office. Ordinance 21-57 has been prepared for this evening's meeting. And then we have the Director of Finance's request for legislation number F21-24 to amend the 2021 Budget Ordinance 21-11 to appropriate funds into the Civil Service Budget. Finance Director's request for legislation F21-24 will be held on file in the Clerk's Office. Ordinance 21-58 has been prepared for this evening's meeting. That concludes your written communications. Thank you. We are now under oral communications. Anyone from the attending public who wishes to address city council can do so by stepping forward, um, signing in, telling us their name, and addressing your comments to the president of city council. Okay. We'll move on. We're now under motions. Councilman Leopard. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I would so move to approve uh, two items that were approved by the Charter Review Commission but uh, have not been included in the ordinance. The report of the commission. To the report of the commission. And that is uh, Article 4.02B and 7.03A. Okay, we have a motion to... Um, Accept uh, changes to the amendments that were not included in the previous uh, review of the Charter Commission. Um, is there a second? Councilman Gillig. I'd like to second the motion, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> At this time, I would like to announce a special meeting to um, the meeting will be held on uh, Monday, uh, July 26 at four o'clock and the purpose of the meeting will be to uh, read, ordin uh, read an ordinance uh, that discusses the uh, additional amendments to the charter. And yeah, these, th there will be multiple ordinances, one for each subject matter related to proposed changes to the Charter Review Commission. So th there may be seven, eight or nine depending on kind of the, the groupings that um, we decide on. Thank you. And any other business that might come before the council? Did I say four? I said four o'clock Monday the 26th, correct? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> any other motions? We're now uh, under resolutions. There are no resolutions, Mr. President. Thank you. We're now under ordinances. Ordinance number 21-45, introduced by Ben Gillig. Ordinance adopting a tax budget for fiscal year 2022, attached hereto as a part hereof and directing the Director of Finance to deliver the budget to the Seneca County, County Auditor on or before July 20th, 2021, and declaring an emergency. This is the third reading of Ordinance 21-45, Councilman Gillig. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for immediate passage of Ordinance 21-45. We have a motion for immediate passage of Ordinance 21-45. Is there a second, Councilwoman Boyle? I'll second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on the emergency, please. Councilwoman Yanatuno. Yes. Councilman Leppert. Yes. Councilman Perkins. Yes. Councilwoman Boyle. Yes. And Councilman Gillig. Yes. The emergency passes with a vote of five to zero. We will now vote on the passage of Ordinance 21-45. Councilwoman Yanatuno. Yes. Leopard? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Harry? I'm sorry. Boyle? Yes. Gillick? Yes. 
Ordinance 21 45 passes with a vote of 5 to 0. Ordinance number 21-47, introduced by Ben Gillig, ordinance amending the 2021 budget ordinance number 21-11 to appropriate $5,000 into the Women Victim Assistance Budget for services to victims in Tiffin Fostoria Municipal Court cases. This is the third reading of Ordinance 21-47. Councilman Gillig. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to ask for immediate passage of Ordinance 21-47. We have a motion for the immediate passage of Ordinance 21-47. Is there a second? Councilwoman Yanatuno. I'll second, Mr. President. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the vote on the passage of Ordinance 21-47. Councilwoman Yanatuno. Yes. Leopard. Yes. Perkins. Yes. Boyle. Yes. And Gillig. Yes. Ordinance 21 47 passes with a vote of 5 to 0. Ordinance number 21 51, introduced by Steve Leopard. Ordinance authorizing and directing the city administrator to enter into an agreement with a professional design firm for preparation of the engineering and design for the Riverview Estates sewer replacement project. This is the second reading of Ordinance 21 51. Ordinance number 21 52, introduced by Steve Leopard. Ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept a permanent easement from LSCS Incorporated or current property owner at 60 Heritage Drive for storm sewer purposes and declaring an emergency. This is the second reading of Ordinance 21-52. Ordinance number 21-53 introduced by Steve Leppard. Ordinance authorizing city administrator to prepare plans and specifications Advertise for and receive bids and recommend and execute a contract for constructing decorative stamped concrete in downtown Tiffin and declaring an emergency. This is the second reading of Ordinance 21-53. Ordinance number 21-57, introduced by Ben Gillig. Ordinance amending the 2021 budget ordinance number 21-11 to appropriate $2,000 into the Parks Department budget for pool chemicals and $4,000 for day camp programs. This is the first reading of Ordinance 21-57. Ordinance number 21-58, introduced by Ben Gillig. Ordinance amending the 2021 budget ordinance number 21-11 to appropriate $15,000 into the civil service budget for materials and supplies needed for the police lieutenant and the deputy fire chief tests. This is the first reading of Ordinance 21-58. And that concludes the ordinances. Thank you. We're now at the uh, end of our agenda. Does anyone have anything for the put of the order? That's McGillig. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple brief questions. Um, as many of you were asking about my mom, I really appreciated that. Um, she's all set at the Willows, and we went down uh, Fair Lane, and it's it's beautiful. Um, will that ever be a, a cut through, or will that always be kind of a entrance and, and exit? Yeah, it will eventually be a road all the way across to market. It's just we are waiting until there's additional development on the site because um, as we talked about a few years ago when we did the original project, I don't even remember what year now, everything starts to blend together, but we had, we had done the original project. Um, we just, that site's so large, <coughs> and our fear was we said, you know, <clears throat> I shouldn't even say names because it's going to get people. <laughs> but, you know, we sat there thinking, well, what happens if Target wants to go in here and we put the road what looks to be the logical course of straight through. Well, if you look at a site map and an aerial of what a target would be, it couldn't fit there. So then we would do what we're always accused of doing and taking out the brand, brand new constructed road for development and spending twice as much money. So what we would like to do is complete the project once more of it develops. Now, whether that means one large tenant like a target or something, or whether that means it's going to be a lot of smaller things like some restaurants and some smaller stores and whatever, uh, or it could be even a combination. It could be some residential <coughs> mixed in with it. Uh, we would like to wait until the site develops more um, so that we get the road at the right place at the right time because you're looking at probably still another $3 million or so for that road the rest of the way through. And if we're going to spend $3 million, let's make sure we get the road right the first time. Sure. <laughs> um, so that's the plan there at that site is one day it will go through. It's just... It may have by now if we wouldn't have had a pandemic where where everyone that we were talking to kind of, you know, disappeared <laughs> because they were just, yeah, people were afraid to put in new businesses and open new stores, et cetera. Well, that extra, you know, 100 feet on 224 to the next light won't, 
Won't hurt anybody. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, second question, um, a constituent had called and asked, uh, there's some city owned property and maybe on Jackson Street, um, some sort of building. Right. No, go ahead. It used to be used by the traffic signal department for repair of lights and boxes. It's uh, right across oh, from Applejack Park. Yeah, the park. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. T T Tiffin University used it for a while for storage of football equipment at one time, I believe, uh, when they used to use Applejack Park as a practice field. Um, the constituent mentioned that uh, there's been a few times where he mentioned that maybe the parks department had called uh, uh, property owners near the area to see if they'd be interested in, in purchasing it since it doesn't sound like we're using it. And he expressed an interest in, in possibly exploring purchasing the building. Interrupt for yeah, a bit. I'd like it. to have it too. <laughs> Do you also want it for cars? It's a oh, big no. worn out. Yeah, that's what he wants it for cars. <laughs> hey, Minister, we did disconnect all of the gas, electric, water. Uh, water to that building. We were prepared to sell it a year ago, uh, but we had no offers for it. So we have looked at demolishing the building and then offering it again. But if there's someone who's interested, I think they could step forward and make an offer and the council would have to decide whether they wanted to sell that fee parcel of land or not. Yeah, that, that's right. I, th I think the, the proper way would be if, if this person wants to make an offer, uh, they, they can. Um, the city administration would probably investigate it and make sure all the facts are put together and then present to city council. It takes ordinance to approve the sale of property. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Leopard. You do realize, Mr. Mayor, that the headlines tomorrow is going to be the mayor said Target is coming to town. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be great. He meant Kohl's. <laughs> no, it's Costco. Kohl's and, I, Kohl's and Ikea. Yeah, that's why I figured I'd use Costco, but we already have had two uproars over that. So. <laughs> two terribly timed April okay. Fool's jokes that others made, not me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two things to follow up on Councilman Gillig's question. I thought at one point that was going to go through to Fairlane or connect with Fairlane. Is it going to ever do that? That was also one of the possibilities. We own the whole right of way there. Um, the goal is to get the whole thing done in phases. So phase one was the two, whatever you want to call them, almost stubs that go into it. Phase two would be connecting those two all the way through. And phase three would indeed be Fairlane going through all all the way, but between the last two phases that are left, it's probably another six, seven million to get both of those done. Okay. I was just kind of curious. Yeah, it, it, because we envision that whole area in there to develop. It's just a matter of coming up with the resources. You know, if you had, if we had a large tenant like a Target or a Costco, <laughs> that we could TIF the property and, and obtain a substantial portion in TIF revenue to help pay off the the notes or the bonds, um, it would be a lot more likely to happen much quicker. Uh, but we need something like that um, to kind of give us the, the reason and the impetus to get the project completed. But yeah, there's a three-phase three plan to get the whole thing done. Okay. And eventually, if, if the area was ever annexed, even connecting one or two of the small roads over to, is that maybe Brace, I think? Which, of course, is not in the city right now that far out. But there are plans to eventually, if that area continues to develop, some future administration to tackle things like that even. Oh, yeah, and people need to watch that it's 25 miles an hour on most of Euclid now. And what's the one Ella changes to? Is it Euclid even there? Yeah, Euclid and Hopewell. Mm -hmm. Hopewell, that's the one I can think of. Yeah, because it's 25, but then there is that little stretch of 40 now over by the fairgrounds, and so it's a little, I'm getting a lot of calls about that. Yeah, so. yeah traffic safety, mind, I know, 25 has, miles an hour. Yeah, traffic, traffic safety's discussed that quite heavily, and I think they even did a speed study. Uh, They've out, added more signs, Yeah, too. out there, and Brandon put more signs up at Public Works because we have had issues. It's kind of similar to the issues that we get on Miami Street, because on Miami Street, you're really familiar, because you live right out there, and you're the councilwoman, but one lane is in the city limits, and one is out, so you can technically do 55 and one 
lane and the other lane is, is 35. So we get issues out there frequently with people not understanding that, yes, if they're headed westbound, once they hit the city limits, they can crank it up to 55 with no problem. But the Explain other lane is still 35. Yep. Yeah. But Dale, do you have anything? She was asking about Euclid Avenue. We conducted a speed study. I know traffic safety's discussed it. More signs have been put up. Yes, we discussed it at the last traffic safety committee again. Uh, we're also going to put up, uh, again, the LED speed indicators before the fair so that individuals prior to the county fair will see what, the speed, what their speed is along there. And we have done some education with the public and the police. Uh, we'll be doing some education with the public as they find individuals who are exceeding the speed limit in that area. It is difficult because... You're in the city limits, then you're in the corporation limits, and then you come back into the city limits right. again. So it's, it's rather confusing. So our intent is to educate the public, not to persecute the public. So police may be stopping and giving warnings to individuals just to remind them that the speed limit has changed. Uh, but after two or three months of reminding people and educating people, uh, then we'll have to see where we go from there. Because it is a little odd seeing the 40 mile an hour sign mm -hmm. by the fair gate, mm -hmm. and then you got a stop sign, and then after that, everything's 25. And so it is a little confusing. It's a shame that can't all be just 25 through there because there's a lot of pedestrian activity with the fairgrounds and stuff. What does it take to change that strip of 40 to 25? Well, that would be up to the county, county to change that. Safe. That's not within our purview. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's is that small section is it a county road or a township road when it goes it's actually within the, the township i don't know if it's i don't remember if that anything. little section that's 40 miles an hour if it's a county road or if it's a township because that's who would if it's a county road it would be mark zimmerman at the county if it's a township road it would be the trustees yep. at hopewell that would be the easiest i mean i drive it mm -hmm. constantly and that's exactly what happens you know you just did it today you know, you watching it for that you kind of have to have a lead be... foot to get it up to 40 anyways of the stop sign right there. They try. Yeah. Oh, I know. I, I've seen. They're hitting 45. <laughs> Let us investigate that from the Traffic Safety Committee standpoint, and we can approach either the township or the county, depending on who I think that would solve the problem. Review yeah. and, and see if they would be agreeable to introducing. Mm -hmm. Right. The stop sign in the first place is quite goofy, it seems. You know, I think a lot of it's probably because of fair time, is what I'm guessing, because it doesn't seem like an... Uh, area that you expect to have a stop sign. I do see people frequently run that. Yeah. I'm assuming most of them are out of town. Obviously, if you lived here, you've known there's a stop sign. But yeah, Just a strange area as the city continues to grow, grow that you got a street that's out, then it's in, then it's out. Councilwoman Yonatuno. Sorry, Mr. President, I digressed. So you had signed something to my committee. Yes. <laughs> um, I would like to kind of read through all this stuff first, and maybe the other two councilmen would want to attend this, so would it be okay? Are you in a big hurry for no, this? Or can no, we, not at all. We've been, can we set this up after yeah. next meeting? We've been working on this arts commission. It started sometime during coronavirus last year, so, um, and then the group that was working on it, of course, because of coronavirus, wasn't able to do the traveling like they wanted to. They were finally able to visit some communities and get feedback and pare it down from... I think the original proposal was like 11 or 13 pages long. We've pared it down to where it's at now that we feel is a good length. Um, so there's absolutely no hurry. I mean, obviously, we don't want it to die in committee or sit there for a year. But, yeah, uh, there's ample time um, for you all to, to, to take your time to, to read it, digest it. Because there's quite a bit here, and I want to mm -hmm. go through that before I hold the meeting. Certainly. So, mm -hmm. so I'll yeah. set that at the next meeting. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Um, I'd like everybody to stick around, get our uh, notices from the clerk for the special meeting. So if there's nothing else, uh, God bless all of you, and uh, have a good night, and thanks for uh, all your hard work and attention. We stand adjourned. Dawn. Yes. City of